Well, thank you so much, me and George. Uh, your conversation is absolutely captivating. And to everyone that's already spoken today, I am just incredibly inspired by this group. So I'm honored to be here today. And I'm really excited to be introducing also from the Baltimore County Police Department, Detective Trey Corbin, who has been with our department for nine years. And he's currently assigned to our public information office. And as all of you know, you know, these last few years have been incredibly challenging for all of us, and certainly for those of us in the law enforcement community, these have been the toughest years that most of us have ever seen. Our profession has been through an extraordinary evolution, and the community has had a significant role in the progress that we continue to make. So I want to take a couple of minutes to get Trey's perspective on our changes and really to get his views on where we are and where we're going in law enforcement in this country. So Trey, before I ask you a few questions, can you just speak to us and share a little bit about what brought you into law enforcement. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Trey Corbin, as the chief uh, mentioned. So when I was younger, my father was a police officer, and I always wanted to be a police officer growing up. When he would come home, I would see him. I would stop everything I'm doing. Uh, he would come in with his vest on. He'd lift his arms up. I'd take his vest off and say, Daddy, what'd you do today? So that would always interest me. So, and, you know, we share the background uh, of our fathers, both having been in law enforcement before us. And, you know, in the time that you've been in this profession, there has just been such dramatic change. How do you see policing evolving in our country and really across our communities? And, and most importantly, what do you see as your role in these changes as a police officer that still has a lot of years left in this profession? Yes. So at this time, I slowly see that law enforcement is actually taking a long look in the mirror and realizing that us as people hurt people, hurt people. So if we're not good ourselves as police officers, we're not going to be able to police the individuals in the communities the proper way, which a lot of departments across the United States have started implementing officer wellness, which allows officers to get the clinical help that they need, create safe spaces for them so that they can actually, you know, come together as a group, talk about things that normal people don't see on a daily basis basis. And I myself went through a traumatic incident in 2019 and was one of the first people to openly speak up about it. And since then, I have became an advocate for officer wellness and I go around at different police departments speaking about such. And I applaud your courage and your bravery for doing that in a profession that it hasn't been historically acceptable to really talk about some of the times that we're hurting and some of the help that we really need. Um, just another question for you, Trey. Um, when you look across the country, particularly as it pertains to law enforcement, what is your greatest fear? So my fear is that we lose sight of what our actual oath is, and that is to protect and serve the communities that we police in and not actually serving ourselves. By that meaning, again, we go in here day in and day out. We do things that most people won't do, but we have to put that as the forefront going forward and not go back to only thinking of us, us, us. Yeah, I think that's a great point. And, you know, I would also add to that with everything that our profession has been through over these last few years, um, you know, it's also important that we don't forget the lessons, uh, both on the side of the greater community, but also on the side of law enforcement in general, that lessons we've learned so that way we don't have to repeat some of the things that we've gone through over these last few years. In your perspective, what are the things that we need to do to really begin to mend some of the fractures between the police and the community and to really help build trust and relationships? So I believe we first start off internally and we need to educate our officers rather than continually to train our officers. The difference between that, you can train somebody to put a shoe on, but the education comes in once when you teach them how to tie that shoe. We need to teach our officers how to engage with the community, how that different, different parts of the community are different if you can go one block and you can go, you know, for us, we can go across the county. Things are different and we need to absolutely understand that. Um, us as Baltimore County, we have partnered uh, to be a part of the Faith in Blue initiative where we uh, we mend with uh, local churches. And we actually just had that back in October, which is a great experience. We use our faith-based community to bridge that gap in our communities and continue that uh, relationship. And that's such a great point. It's really important for us to make sure, as those of us in local law enforcement, that we're working closely with pillars in the community, and whether it's the faith-based community or other entities, so that way we can work closely with them 
and then extending out from there, continue to build trust in the communities we serve. And, and obviously in terms of keeping our society safe, um, that's something that, that takes all of us working together and those relationships and that trust really matter. And we also recognize that we can spend all of this time building trust and then it takes one incident to really impact that trust. So um, that's certainly incredibly important. Um, Trey, as we uh, start to run short on our time, why do you stay in this profession? You know, with all of the things that have gone on over these last few years, we see police officers across the country that are making the decision not to remain in this profession. What inspires you to continue to stay here and continue to do the work that you're doing? So I myself got into this profession for a specific reason, and that was to help individuals that look like myself, to help them to not be able to experience some of the things that have happened in the past. And I myself being in the public relations role, I'm the individual that they see representing the department. So if somebody in a younger generation that looks like me, or again, may not even look like me, can see that, hey, he can do it, that gives me hope and that uh, gives me to put my uniform on or my suit every day and come into work. Well, we certainly hope that you continue to do that and you continue to stay safe out there. And Trey, I really want to thank you for joining us today. This is a great conversation and probably another one that we can talk for, you know, another hour. But now I'm very excited to pass things over to my fellow classmate, George McGraw. And um, he is out there in California. And uh, great to see you, George, and looking forward to hearing what you have to say.